Hey there, in this video, we're going to talk about the Barry Harris system. And some of you are thinking, what you just played there, that wasn't the Barry Harris system. Actually, it was. And later on in the video, I will show you how you can use this system to create a more, I guess, modern sound like what I just did. But first, we'll, uh, I'll explain what it is and how you can use it and why it's important. And then if you already know what the Bear Harry system is, you might want to skip ahead in this video. And if you don't know, there are a couple of things that I would say are required knowledge for watching this video. You need to know what harmonized scales are, drop two voicings and uh, inversions. If you know what those th things are, you should be fine. So now, what is the Barry Harris system? Let's say we have a C major 7 chord. Drop 2. Good old C major. As I'm sure all of you know, if I harmonize that chord according to the C major scale, I get this. This is kindergarten stuff, right? So, I mean, it's important to know this stuff and you should know this stuff, but it's not very helpful in a playing situation where there's a vamp or something and you need to come up with chords. Uh, if you go in, you know, it's like, it, uh, that might not be what you're looking for. So what Barry Harris do, instead of harmonizing a major scale, he's harmonizing a major bop scale. He doesn't refer to it as bob scales, but that's basically basically what it is. So a C major bob scale is a major scale with an added flat six. Now imagine that we harmonize this same scale, same chord, but according to this scale instead. That would be pretty tricky to do, right? Let me see if I can do it. I hope I did that right. And as you can tell, these chords are pretty modern sounding. Now, instead of me giving you the chord symbols here on the screen or whatever, I need for you to figure it out yourself. This is actually an important process to go through. There this, is this, uh, I see if I can find this video. It's a footage from a workshop with Barry Harris where he's kind of mean to his students, to his students and he keeps repeating after G there's A flat or something like that because you have to, they keep forgetting that A flat. But this is not what Barry Harris does, instead of harmonizing this chord, C major seven, we're supposed to harmonize this chord, C major six. Remember back in the day, that was a more uh, common chord. That this, this major seven is actually a quite modern sound. It's quite dissonant. That's a dissonance. So the, the major six sound is more consonant. And early jazz tunes, you often hear that note as a chord tone. I don't know why, when that changed, when happened, when we went from major six chords to major sevens. But anyway, now let's say I harmonize that chord according to the major bob scale. He doesn't refer to it as major, uh, major bob scale, but rather major six diminished scale or major six diminished which should be obvious for everybody in a couple of seconds watch this so it's a major six diminished major six this is the inversion of the first chord diminished is this the inversion of the second chord major six diminished major six diminished major six 
So for some of you already knew this, for others it might be mind blowing like it was for me, or for a lot of you, I guess you, you kind of, I knew this thing, but I never thought of it as a harmonized bob scale until recently when I watched these videos uh, by this YouTube channel called Things I've Learned from Barry Harris. There's this guy who studied with Barry Harris. I have referred to this channel before and I'm doing it again. I'm going to link to it. So it's kind of like I'm learning from somebody who learned from Barry Harris and now you're learning it from me. So I don't know if there is any book by Barry Harris. I think there are a couple of his workshops, like DVDs out there or something. Please let me know if you know of any of his books. I haven't found any. This might be something like I was aware of this, but I never thought of it. I thought of it as a harmonized bob scale. So to me, it was just some kind of West Montgomery trick or something. So it sounds kind of like uh, old, right? Let's say I have a little loop. Early jazz. So let's do it, the chords on the top four strings. Sometimes people have a hard time wrapping their heads around the fact that this is a C major chord and not an A minor. It's the same shape as A minor. It, technically, it is an A minor, but here it's functioning as a C6. So some people have like find it weird to play this chord. Again, the sixth is an important note in this kind of early jazz. It could even be a melody note, right? Because in classical music, usually you think of the major sixth on a tonic chord as something that wants to resolve, but here it's a chord tone, it kind of rests there. A lot of students have a hard time finding that note, I think, is because of the fact that we're thinking of the major seven instead these days. So, but for example, if you start that tune, there will never be another U. It starts on the six, right? People think of it as just some kind of scale, but no, it's a chord tone. So I sometimes ask my students that, can you sing that melody and stay on that note and really hear it? And it's, it's not that easy. So I'm just playing this major chords and the diminished chords. I think uh, West Montgomery would play different, he would play probably fourths. Instead of the major, because it, it's more user-friendly, right? So. You could also do this with minor. All you do is you uh, drop the third to a minor third. Other than that, it's the same thing. So that would sound like this. So C minor six. So it's like a tonic with a dominant, tonic, dominant, tonic. So that would be the minor six diminished scale. So you see the why it's called that? So a major six chord, alternating diminished chord would be major six diminished and 
vice versa, minor six diminished. I think that's uh, what he called these scales. So that would be a minor, melodic minor scale with a flat six, or also referred to as a minor bop scale, melodic minor bop scale. So this sounds like early jazz. It sounds like Count Basie block chords. Nothing wrong with that, of course, but uh, that might not be what you're looking for. Now, you still need to know this stuff because this is a perfect example of something that I think a lot of students, they get it. It's like, yeah, it's the major six chord and the diminished chord, but do you really have it under your fingers? Can you play it? For example, do you know it? I'm just using one drop voicing that. There are other drop voicings. Do you play it on all set of strings? For example, if I play it on the bottom set of strings, G, This doesn't sound that old-fashioned like this chord here. That's a major six, it's like two fifths, right? Two fourths. So you need to know these things in uh, all over the fretboard, like minor. See, it's not that easy. Huh. Where is it? There. <laughs> so just because it doesn't sound super hip modern, you need to have this under your fingers, I think, because all the kind of new stuff is something comes from the earlier stuff. So if the better you understand where everything is coming from, you uh, are going to be able to understand what the new stuff is, if that makes any sense. So th the secret to figuring out how the modern players play is to understand the early stuff and really have it on your fingers. Even though you won't necessarily hear Gilad Hexelman and those guys play these chords like that, like. But if you want to understand what they're doing, you need to understand the basics. You can't just skip something. It's like uh, if you learn martial arts or something, you have to go through all the steps, in my opinion. You can't just like, oh, I want to do that amazing stuff that the uh, black belt guys are doing. Yeah, but the reason they can do that is because they went through all the steps and they really know it. Just because you don't see them do it the basic stuff because they don't do that anymore doesn't mean that they don't know how to do that stuff so if that makes any sense sorry about that, my little rant there the importance of knowing the basics and knowing it really well so really have those voicings under your fingers because now we're gonna make it more modern let's say we have all this under our fingers now we want to make more modern sound okay this is another thing i got from that video things I learned from Barry Harris, one of the videos that really blew my mind. So I'll explain it. So we go back to this, what we did before, where I harmonized this scale. The harmonized this chord. So that was really tricky to do. There's an easy way to think about that. And if you look at this chord, you say, well, it's a C major seven, but we can also look at it like this. Imagine this chord. If this is the default chord, the chord we're starting everything with, the major six chord, above it is a diminished chord, and below it there's a diminished chord. So every note has a, another note above and below from that bop scale. And so with all the other verses, right? And 
and so on. That means that I can change one of the notes from this voicing to any of the notes from the diminished chords above or below. Remember, you don't always have to be dogmatic and play everything the same. You can, you know, change things around. So let's say we take this second note from the top, the A, and borrow from the diminished chord above it. We get this note, B. So I'm not thinking of that as the B, I'm thinking of that as a note from this chord. So I'm not thinking of it as a C major 7, but as C major 6 with an extension kind of. Right, so if I do that with the other voicings too, I end up with this. Instead of so the second note from the top, raises. It's a more modern sound. So this is a more modern sound than this. It's a more modern sound than that. Then this is a sus sound. Right? So you see what's going on? It's a completely different way of thinking of it. I'm not thinking of this uh, as a major seven, I'm thinking of it as a, a note change. So let's say I have a more modern context than than this. Let's erase that. So, I don't know. change that note, uh, let it fall as it were, so... It's a little bit awkward for the fingerings and we'll get to what you can do about that. You could also approach that note, the A, from a note from a diminished chord below when we get this. So the, the major six chord drops the note, note from the top, second note from the top. Now this is a very modern sound. example why you, it's good to understand theory because imagine you go to a teacher a private teacher or something and you say I want to I want more modern sounds and he'll be like yeah here's a modern chord voice but you don't understand anything where it's coming from or why uh, so all you have is this like oh I can play this chord now so anytime I see a major seven chord I'll play this instead because my teacher told me I could do that. And people might be like, huh, what, what's he playing? <laughs> but if you actually know where things are coming from and how then you can manipulate it and you can create movement and uh, you can change things. And of course, you could take any other note from this chord and change it as well. And uh, several notes, they could be moving in different directions, contrary motion can go crazy but uh, I don't want this video to be an hour long so we're gonna leave it at that but there's one more thing one more thing I want to mention if I play this chord here all my fingers are being used so that doesn't give me a lot of uh, options to move things around another 
thing I've noticed is that modern players tend to leave out notes from the chords and play smaller voicings. You might think that it's all about playing bigger voicings with lots of extensions and hip notes, but I think it's better to play smaller voicings. So one technique that I like to use that I kind of came up myself is to imagine that your uh, a string is missing. So imagine that we don't have the D string or something. Then I would have this instead. So I'm not playing the, anything on the D string. second from the top now all of a sudden I can let that note fall whereas before I couldn't do that without letting go of the other notes so I made it easier I think it's open up, opening up the harmony and you always want to leave something for the listener to imagine, right? And all of a sudden, we have created a more modern sound, I think. like this note the A flat could also be a G sharp it's almost like a magic note because it could it creates all these different sounds right it could be an E7 or an F minor It's a really cool note, right? Now, um, I'm going to do it on, I'm going to change the set of strings again and do it in G. Now, these chord shapes are very user friendly. G, E, B. the second note from the top. So I'm not thinking what chords I'm actually ending up playing. I'm just thinking that scale and moving things around and all of a sudden these different colors appear. So if you're a, like me, a Django enthusiast, you, you recognize these right even better with minor this is like the magic uh, Django voicing even um, he maybe he didn't play it but if you play in that style you often play that and again that's an early uh, old style of playing right modern players don't like it when you do that when you go like they think it gives gets in the way of of their soloing right but you can also create modern sounds what I like to do I like to take a really super simple melody because if you try to do this with dolphin dance or something you might uh, ending up just getting confused so plus if you play a tune like that you wouldn't use bop scales really 
to take like a nursery rhyme or uh, hymn. Hymns are amazing. So you could take, you know, silly it's like, it's like. Now go to C. Now that's C scale instead. said earlier that I will show you modern sounds you didn't expect me to play twinkle twinkle little star did you or you could take a hymn um... Other strings you could add colors extensions to this right so you can create with very little information actually it's just a major bob scale you can create all sorts of different harmonies and all that so yeah I hope that explains something. And again, I'm getting a lot of this stuff from that uh, YouTube channel called uh, Things I Love From Bahari. So I'll link to it and uh, go check it out. And uh, oh yeah, so I recently reached 10,000 subscribers. So with that, I will start live streaming and uh, hopefully there will be some people who want to check that out and I will let you know when that happens. And as usual, I'm making videos every other Friday, lessons, tutorials every other Friday, and then performance videos on the other weeks, as it were. So yeah, I shall see you next time.